Welcome to Loop Learnings and in today's topic we are going to talk about the VB coding for another form but before that I would like to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon so you get notification as well when I were I upload a new video right this is video number 16 in the series of how to make PUS system and in previous video if you remember if you have watched if you haven't watched the link of those all previous videos are in the description below so find out the links and click on them and watch them so you understand what we are trying to build here right so in the previous video we uh, we have done the VB coding for products form uh, today we are going to do the VB coding for purchase form right so this form will be used to do the data entry and to monitor and perhaps uh, to do the inventory management from this form itself. Now, if in the ideal world, when we are building the big applications to a for a customer, the purchase and the inventory management will be two different uh, they are interlinked to each other but they are managed differently but because this is a small application for a grocery store perhaps uh, so we'll be using the same form to do the purchase and the data input that we are going to give in this form the output of the data we are going to use that output to 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 determine our inventory such as stock on hand, stock reserved, stock on order, stock in transit, all of that we are going to do from the output of this particular form. This means we are going to do the VB coding for multiple functions. So for example, we are do going to do VB coding for uh, creating purchase order. So PO means purchase order. So when we are creating a purchase order, what we need well we need the product we need the price we need the quantity that how much we need to order or how much we are per how many pieces or quantity we are purchasing and what would be the total price of that pro purchase price of that product that we are purchasing so we need to give that information and uh, then we will create our purchase order once the purchase order is created that means the purchase will happen from the supplier or vendor whatever you call it and once the vendor or supplier has delivered the goods to to us for example i'm assuming that we are using this software and, and, and we are the grocery store so when the supplier or vendor has delivered the goods to us we will actually have to receive those goods right receiving does not mean that uh the the stock is available receiving means we have placed the order for 10 pieces for so and so products and we have received 10 pieces or nine pieces or eight pieces whatever pieces of that the, that particular product on a certain date and time that's why there is a received on and received quantity and reference document number in here i'm going to talk about these uh, in few minutes later so once the goods is, is received then we will tally we will do the counting we will check whether it's a short access or damage we will check all those those things once everything is okay we'll put those goods or that material into the shelf wherever the storage location will be in our store we'll uh, bin them bin those items and then we will mark them as a current stock that now the item is available for sale that's when we will consider it as a current stock so all of this is very important and we are going to do VB coding for all of these now the last piece of uh, this puzzle is to do the payments so we are handling payment from here itself so for example we ordered 10 pieces and the total price purchase price for those 10 pieces were let's say 200 
whatever currency you are in uh, you are whichever currency uh, currency whichever country you are in uh, and whatever currency you wish to attach to it dollars rupees or uh, euros whatever so let's say 200 is the purchase price and we have paid 200 right and we have made the payment on so and so date and uh, so, so so this is all this is all we are going to do within this video now i don't know if i would be uh covering every aspect of whatever i just spoke about in one video because this is going to be a a long video perhaps a, an hour long video or maybe longer than that and honestly uh my my statistics on my youtube channel they show that people don't watch my videos more than 10 minutes and i can understand that these are kind of boring videos in some sense uh, for a lot of people but some for some people it's very interesting i'm sure because they take in trust in watching these videos in learning these things and um, let's see if if i can cover everything within shorter period of time i'll keep that everything in one video otherwise will split it into two videos perhaps all right let's move ahead and let's do the coding so we'll go to the design view um well first let's talk about the logics right what about the save button well there are two actions we want to happen we want to have to happen with save button one is when we are about to create po we need to have certain information such as for what product uh, we are creating PU and how much price uh, would be uh, for that product. So we we want this particular area to be filled in when uh, we are actually saving the information. So saving mean initiating the purchase order request, right? That's what saving mean. Now we want another action to be performed and that would be updating. So updating has a certain logic to it, right? updating is updating means that the uh, for example i've chosen a product initially i've chosen i've given a 10 quantity but later on i say mm, 10 would be more uh, let's order eight so that would be a change in the data right so that change needs to be saved needs to be updated and we will we will achieve that with the save button itself so that means we have to build in some logics before we even go ahead and do the coding and those logics will be first logic will be if this form is empty like this if there is no product selected then say hey first you have to select a record in order to proceed further that's the first logic second if the uh, inventory status now inventory status is uh, uh po is created goods are received or uh, it is marked as current stock or it is fully paid and the updates should not be made right uh, technically we will look at one condition only if the uh, po is created that is it the updates cannot be made correct so we have to build these logics in order to make sure that nothing uh uh, no shortcuts can be taken by the users so let's go ahead and do the vba coding so we'll go to the design view i'll click on save button and we'll go to the property sheet even tab dot 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 from the list we'll choose code builder and here we are we are in the vb editor so you know first thing i i love to do is the error handling and that is very important so on error resume next all right so we have taken care about the error handling very important code block make sure you do that and within this code block we have to do the coding so we'll say all right if is null me dot purchase id dot value is equal to true then then what should be done well do cmd dot beep okay then through a message to the user please select a purchase record to proceed further okay simple we be critical and 
the message box title would be information okay simple as that now if next condition the only one condition we would allow the changes to happen would be when the status is PO initiated that's when we want only changes to happen other than that we don't want any changes to happen in this particular data right so if the PO is created we don't want quantity to be quantity to be changed correct we don't want uh, purchase price to be changed because the PO has already been created so there is no logic uh, to change anything in it so let's uh, go ahead and uh, continue else if right else if me dot inventory status dot value is equal to if the status is uh, PO created oops we have to have to PO created or me dot inventory status dot value is equal to uh, goods receipt and that's in short GRN goods receipt notification comma oh, or me dot inventory status dot value is equal to if the current stock okay why I'm putting comma or me dot inventory status dot value is equal to uh, is equal to what uh, fully paid we have to look for these things why I'm putting comma again and again or me dot inventory store inventory status dot value perhaps I'm hungry that's why I'm making these mistakes apologies for that partially paid if any of this if the if the status inventory status is any among any of these then through an error that this action cannot be performed simple as that okay so to save time we'll just copy it and we'll change the message we'll say this action cannot be performed that's is that's it you know we want changes to happen only if the inventory status is PO initiated that is it that's when only we want changes to happen else if me dot inventory status dot value is equal to PO initiated then then we want changes to happen so do cmd dot save okay do cmd dot beep and we want to throw a message box saying the updates to the uh, purchase record purchase record are successfully made okay comma we be information comma information right what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it and if okay first thing uh, I forgot to do one thing and that is for example now we are coming to this area right uh, we have to do certain things here well first of all we want to bring the data uh, in in uh, so let me see yeah so if you will see here I have already done the uh, workaround and that is to bring the data in this particular um, list box or combo box from the product table right uh, what we want is for example when the user wants to choose a product to purchase first they will have to choose the category from the dot dot list once the category is chosen then this combo box should be updated automatically based on the category chosen right so just listen carefully based on the category chosen 
this combo box should be updated automatically and after that once we have chosen a product from this combo box the purchase price the UOM which is units of measure should and the storage location and the payment due on should automatically be updated well payment due on just leave it uh, leave it in a different we'll 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 uh, do it when we will click on create PO button but first let's let's stay here in this area I will repeat it so user will have to choose the category first and based on that category this combo box should be updated so all the products so for example user has chosen personal care category this combo box should show only products that exist in the products table related to the personal care and once any of the product is chosen the respective purchase price UOM and storage location should automatically be filled in okay I hope you have understood what I've said now I did some workaround so if I will select on the uh, product combo box product ID you will see in the data tab of the property sheet there is a row source and if I'll click on ellipsis we are in the query back end back end query right so if I will see here what do we have we have chosen we have taken two tables we have taken supplier table and we have taken products table and I will explain that why from the product table we will get the product ID product UOM purchase price storage location category right now I've taken two twice category twice so and the credit days and then the category now category we will have to give reference of the combo box which is located on our form uh, which I was talking about category so we have give reference of that combo box so whatever ID is selected in that combo box based on that this will be filtered now what I'm going to do and which I usually do I take a snipping tool and I nicely take a snippet of it and I close this and then what I do is I give a numbering so when we are doing VB coding it's easy for us so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 I'm sorry I do that because if your memory is strong if you can remember what is the column number for each field then you don't have to do this but I do this this is my practice this is how I do it I don't know why but it works okay so now this combo box cannot be updated without one thing and that is I have to do a one line code behind this combo box so we'll go ahead and do that so we'll go to the event tab and we want to do the uh, coding behind on after update after update event okay that's when we want to uh, update so I'll copy simply the code block for error handling on error resume next so one liner code and that is um, me dot product ID dot recurry okay that is it that's the one liner code okay basically what we did we have asked the Microsoft access hey whenever there is a change in the drop down list so I'll go to the form view so I'll tell you what I'll show you what. so whenever there's a change now right now it's only one but there are multiple categories so whenever user will change the category based on that category this product list should be updated automatically so that's what that VB code one line code will do okay that's very important don't forget about it otherwise it will not work so just to let you know all right now we have done the a lot of talking now let's go ahead and do VB coding 
So as I explained, based on what we have selected from the product ID combo box, the purchase price, the UOM uh, should automatically be updated. Okay. Now, and storage location as well. Let's go ahead and do the uh, VBA coding. And uh, to do that, we will go to the save button. Okay. In here. And uh, we want to look for if any of this field is empty. That's what we want to look for uh, behind the save button. So if the category ID, product ID, purchase price, quantity, UOM, total price um, are missing, then throw an error. That's the that's the uh, coding we are going to do. Okay. So I'll say else if is null me dot category category ID dot dot value is equal to true then uh, I'm going to just copy and paste a code so just to make things quick um, please choose the product product category from the drop down list okay not listy list and we'll say me dot category id dot set focus we'll copy this and we will do we will check for the product id as well so we'll say me dot else if is me dot product id dot value is true then give a message box saying please choose the product from the drop down list simple as that then i will do the coding if the purchase price okay if the me dot purchase price if is null me dot purchase price or me dot purchase price dot value is equal to zero even if it is zero then also then also throw a message please provide the purchase price please provide the purchase price of the product or the purchase price of the product is missing purchase price of the mm -hmm, of the product is missing and hence this action cannot be performed okay simple as that and we'll bring our cursor to the purchase well this cursor uh, this field uom total price story location these are all going to be non-editable so we don't need to put the focus on them because otherwise it will give an error okay then we'll go to the uom uom me dot uom okay is true if is null uom is true please provide the the uom or unit of measure of the product is missing and hence this action cannot be performed even if it is total price even if the total price is missing right then also we don't want to create an order uh, purchase order guys if i want i can just do one line record and say hey it's done but i don't want i want the product to be used in a proper manner and i want uh, this is my style so whenever i do any work I make sure that nothing raw data goes in nothing goes in which is not usable that's that's how the that's that's what the purpose is and that's why I have to check everything and that's why there are a lot of code blocks hope you are understanding me so purchase price we are done if the total price also okay 
so total price cannot be empty correct if you're purchasing something you have to give give some money to someone and then they will give you it cannot be empty or it cannot be zero as well so that's what we are doing with this code so the total total purchase price of the product is missing and hence this section cannot be performed well the storage location is the optional as if you have seen the previous video i did mention and explain that why so we are not going to put any logic for the storage location otherwise if all of these are false then simply um, fill in this uh, save the data and fill these fields as well created on inventory status status state do that okay so let's do the coding me dot created on dot value is equal to now okay me dot inventory status dot value is equal to po initiated then status state me dot status state dot value is equal to now hmm, now and what else what else and uh, no no this is not, this is not uh, that is it and uh, give a message box do cmd dot beep and message box the purchase order is initiated you may proceed further to the next step nice and easy okay oops comma vb information and then heading of the message box would be information as well and if ladies and gentlemen we are done with the coding so twice why twice save it always good to debug it so if any mistake we have done during the during the coding we would know and we would understand so ladies and gentlemen the vba coding for the save button is completed now next step uh, we want to do is remember i said that we have to whenever the product is chosen from this drop down menu the purchase price the uom and the total price sorry purchase price uom and store location should automatically be filled in that's what i said so let's go ahead and do vb coding for this combo box and we will use after update event okay after update event so dot 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 code builder you know first thing what we need to do on error resume next okay first thing we need to do is the error handling code block between this code block we have to do this coding so we'll say me dot purchase price dot oops dot value is equal to is equal to what well we have the information in this combo box and here it is so if we will see the purchase price is sitting in the column number three of the combo box product id i hope you are understanding what i am saying here if not please rewind a little bit and you would know what i have explained earlier about this so let's go ahead and do that so column number three me dot product id dot value is it dot me dot provider column number three okay that's where so what what this code block will do so the moment mom the moment user will click on a product which they want to use they the the microsoft access will look the look for the purchase price sitting in this combo box you cannot see it but it is there and it is sitting in column number three so it will look for column number three in this combo box and whatever the value will be there it will populate in this particular field purchase price that's how it is done uom next is uom and that is sitting in column number two so we'll go there in the vba builder code builder and we'll say me dot uom dot 
value is equal to me dot product id dot column which column column number two that's where the uom is located right column number two what next we have well we have the storage location so we'll say me dot storage location dot value is equal to me dot product id dot column what column we are looking at so the story location is located in column number four okay column number four so here we are so this is done okay this code is done as well so ladies and gentlemen what we did is basically we have done the coding for the save button and for the save button we have looked for a couple of parameters that needs to be filled in before the uh, PO will be initiated and then we looked at the category and product ID combo box and from there we uh, did the VB coding for the product ID and so the purchase price UOM total price uh, storage location will automatically be filled in so I think uh, for now for this video we will leave it and when we come back in the next video we will continue with the rest of the process as i mentioned at the start of the video this might go a little bit longer than one video because this is very 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 important form um, and we have to take care of a lot of things and i cannot make well i can make it in one video but i'm afraid that no one will watch it that long video so that's why i'm splitting this so i hope you don't mind me doing it uh, so you know for your benefit so you can understand okay so let's meet in the next video and uh, honestly next video will also be uploaded uh, very soon after when you're watching this after the next day the video will be uploaded so um stay tuned and thank you very much for watching if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get notification whenever i upload a new video uh, thank you for supporting and take care i'll see you in the next one